Greetings, my name is Rashida Das, and I assist people with self-improvement and spiritual growth. And I'm guessing you're here because for one reason or another, you can't seem to meditate. Um, meditation is a difficult thing when we begin. And, and I'm, I'm trying to illustrate this in this video right now because I'm sitting outside in about, I'd say 20 degree weather just because I want to meditate on this topic while I provide it because I can't do it the other way when I'm sitting inside and being completely quiet. Uh, so why is it that we can't seem to meditate and what might it be that, that, that holds us back from meditation? Well, I'm gonna explain that right now and hopefully it can help you going forward learn how to meditate. So what is the, the biggest issue with meditation? What seems to make it such a difficult thing to most people? Well, from my own experience, um, from writing a book on it, which you can get up here and down below, uh, I've noticed that the biggest factor when it comes to meditation that makes meditation so difficult for so many of us is just this, the mind. We overthink meditation. We, we put meditation on this spiritual pedestal, so to speak, without ever really trying to get into it before we do. So we go into meditation seeing meditation as some daunting thing. And that's why people who, who do meditate a lot, who are proficient with meditation and love and enjoy it, seem kind of so far and few between compared to the rest of us who try it out because once you get into it you realize how simple it is you realize how much the mind overthinks it and that's what we do so we have to stop identifying meditation and overthinking it to begin you can't go into meditation with some sort of ideal in your mind of, of it being a super hard super difficult impossible task and 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 more than anything we can't go into it with this idea that meditation is anything specific at all that's the second point is it, when it comes to overthinking it we also define it and defining meditation is the biggest paradox uh, there can be when it comes to meditating. Uh, it's the same way that Alan Watts once said that trying to define ourselves is like trying to bite your own teeth. Uh, you can't do it. The teeth are what bite. You can't bite what bites. You can't know the knower of the known, as Jiddha Krishnamurti would have said. But, but that's a big thing is, is we try to define, okay, I'm going to sit down and when I'm in this space, I am meditating. Or when I'm right here feeling this, I'm meditating. And we define what that meditation is. It's a nonsensical thing. You know, we don't go into relationships with people saying before we even start dating them that, oh, when I feel this way, I'll know it's love. Or once me and them do this sort of thing and go to these places or date for this long, that's love. We know how silly that is. We know love is something fluid, ever changing, and more, most importantly of all, different for each and every one of us. And if we predefine it, we know what we're going to experience isn't really going to be it. It's just going to be our own idealization of what it might be. Everyone I know, almost everyone, does this with meditation too. They predefine what meditation is. They decide that this is meditation or that is meditation. When I sit down, I have to be here or there or up there or in this. And, and they get this idea in their head that is not meditation. Any idea you have of what meditation is, is wrong let's put it that way and i want you to remember that it's it's wrong because the meditative state is the one that is free from definition free from understanding free from contemplation or, or or the kind of ego awareness of oh here i am meditating it's not there and when you're in the meditative space you're not in any real conscious awareness of that besides the pure presence of being it, it really is kind of like a, a non-dual space a kind of space of of beingness the same way we're in a space of beingness when we are in sleep or when we're really really into something our, our ego presence our witness presence isn't there defining it now we might come back into that witness presence um and go oh wow okay and then kind of realize we might have just been in a meditative state or felt like we were in a meditative state but even going forward when you begin to have these experiences you can't define the meditation stop trying to decide what it is or isn't before you even really get into it another big thing that people need to realize is that consistency is everything sadhana is the, the one of the fundamental pillars of vedanta and hindu philosophy in general and really any spiritual practice is sadhana daily practice and, and this is a big one is people think they can just flow into and out of meditation or that since they meditated last week or two times last month that when they sit down today 
they should be able to do it. That's again, building expectations, the ego building expectations, and that will just harm us. That won't allow us to meditate. But what does make it a lot easier is consistency. Even myself, you know, I, I had this whole past year, so much going on, so much planning and, and the mind running crazy and dealing with so much stuff. And I did not meditate really at all for a lot of months because of all the things that were going on. And so now that I'm out here um, in Montana, in, in nature, sitting with this presence of being really cold, <laughs> uh, it, it's interesting to be back in a space where I can go back into the meditation every day. But even so doing it, just because I've meditated many times before over many years, doesn't mean that right now sitting down every morning, it's, it's just some instant thing. It's not. It's been a difficult journey. It's been reintegrating back into the practice and I'm doing that without expectation. I'm simply sitting down, being present, letting everything flow and kind of watching all of it play out as the meditation rises and falls like the waves rise and fall in the ocean. Um, but if you stay consistent with it, if you, if you are always in this meditative space. I mean, going into the meditative space, I should say, without that expectation, but doing it on a daily basis, making it a continuous thing, uh, as continuous as showering or, or brushing your teeth uh, or using the bathroom. If it's that normalized, if it's that regular to your daily process, it will become that much easier for the meditation to unfold from within, to, to occur, so to speak, versus if you were only attempting it once a week or every couple of days. The more often you make it part of your daily schedule, the easier it will be to flow into the meditative states and the less you will care when you don't feel like you are entering into these states or you don't feel like you are having a good meditation session. Make it part of your sadhana, make it a part of your daily ritual and, and it will flow like never before. It's crazy, it's crazy how, 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 how flowing and how accepting and how immersive reality becomes when we get back into this this being space this pure space this this non-dual just presence uh in the meditative state and, and based on whether you or not, or whether or not you take it seriously or practice it it will dictate the questions you even ask because of it um so that is another one of the amazing steps and ways that we can bring into meditation and why we're not is we're not having sadhana we have to make it consistent and and the next thing is one that uh ramdas actually talked about once in a lecture and that i agree with uh and that i speak about in my book is is changing it up changing it up if, if a meditative practice you're doing becomes routine. If you feel like you're getting into it or that you're just kind of sitting and droning on, try different methods of meditation, but try them out for quite a while. If you're gonna switch meditation methods, try them for a month to two months and see which ones you can flow into. But if, if one type doesn't resonate with you, that's totally fine. That's why so many people meditate in so many different ways. Too often people get connected with, I have to be able to do this meditation, or since I'm a Zen Buddhist, I have to, be in a zazen state of meditation. Whereas you could easily just do vipassana or, or mindful meditation or mantra or japa. Your religion or your philosophy or your practice doesn't have to make you do any sort of meditation. Again, that's getting caught in the definitions and saying that A has to be with A, when in reality A can be with B or C or D or E or F. It doesn't matter. Whatever works for you is what works for you. And that comes with, again, going through those motions, sitting with that presence, seeing which practices really bring you to that space where there is just spaciousness, where there's not really you critiquing yourself or defining yourself or, or second guessing, but simply flowing into and out of effortlessly, which takes weeks in the beginning, but once it starts to really hit, uh, it's just like riding a bike. It becomes very normalized if you keep that sadhana up. But if after months, a certain method's not working for you, it's okay to switch up. It's okay to change and to try new ones out, but make sure again, in regards to expectation, you don't go into switching all these methods thinking that, okay, now this type it has to work, or or now this time, now that I'm doing this meditation, since these two didn't work, this one has to work. Get all that out of your mind. Get the ego out of mind when you sit down to meditate and just sit to sit. You practice the practice to practice the practice. <laughs> that's something I said once and, and uh, I met someone, they're like, oh, I love that quote. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna use right here, right? You practice the practice to practice the practice. 
It's that simple. Uh, you meditate to meditate. You don't meditate to gain or, or to grab or to get or become more spiritual. You just meditate to meditate. It's all part of that doing just to do and you get those, those ulterior motives out of the mind and it becomes a lot easier to partake in all those happenings. So those are a few uh, little simple tips and tricks I think that can help you. If you can't meditate, write those down, read over them for a bit, go into these practices and if they help you, uh, feel free to like, subscribe below and share this video with anyone else you think it might assist. If you guys have any other questions or comments, I would love to hear them. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Ram Ram. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, if you enjoy this channel, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe below. You can also donate at this link right here. And if you ever need any private consultations, personal advice, I offer sessions and emails over the phone, Skype, and text on my website, which you can find down below at fashutadas.com. I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, Ram Ram.